It's blocked yeah. so far. There we go. There it is. There it is. All right. Need somebody to remind me where we were at the last time. We got quite far, actually. Yeah, yeah. we were uh, near the end of the first line of page three. We ended with um, ear F. Uh, U N ear F, what we should do. Yeah, so we're right before the winning. Exactly. We're at the winning there, yeah. Uh, this one, right? Okay. Yep. Yep. All right. Who wants to take the next line? I'll do it. Guess I. Okay, go ahead. Oh, no, you. Okay, okay. Uh, when in net, where mute nature, then neath the great God's mother, uh, Habui, Uha, Enta Pesajet, uh, sent. A letter to the Ennead, uh, Erjed, to say, um, Im ta iut and Isre, give the office of Osiris and Sa'eth to his son, her, Horus. I think that's good. Stopping place. Sounds great. Anything to point out grammatically? Let's say, when in need, where, no, uh, mood nature, right? Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And I guess she sent, so, what's, that's just. Yeah, and mm -hmm. she sent it's a, a pretty letter. straightforward sentence. Straightforward, yeah. yeah. Not really anything else to say, I think. Yeah, just hieratic, I guess. Right. So winning is just sort of a subsequently or something like that. Can you remind me what that, how we read that? I've always just been doing then. It's sort of like a then. Okay. Next. Here, here's the next thing. Then. Like when a little kid just but says and, and then between every sentence. Yes, yeah, kind of. I don't know what is it. Something. <laughs> I do the same. Just say and then. It's mm -hmm. like always a new event basically that's being introduced. I'm not completely mm -hmm. sure what the difference between when in and acha in if there is any at all or if it's just variation. Yeah, I, I translate them the same, but there must be a difference. Otherwise, they wouldn't both be there. Something subtle that we don't. Okay. You think, you think. Yeah, let's look at the hemorrhagic. Anything surprising when looks normal with a little, with a little extra ear here yes. of the, the rabbit. Beautiful cobra for neat. Um, the little egg here. So definitely two strokes. It's not like like you would do a circle or something because you can't do that with a writing implement. It has to be like one yeah. stroke, another stroke. They usually manage to get it more round, even in this same manuscript. I think the earlier lines, it was a little bit... Uh, a little bit more roundish. Easier to see. Yeah. Oh, I didn't notice. Oh, but you're right. Right here's one. Uh. That one definitely looks more round. I've also seen it like in Middle Egyptian text where it's super flat. Like the Hekanaft letters we were discussing the last time, it's essentially that just long drawn out, um, almost looks like a seed or something. <laughs> okay. <laughs> then we have our multi-part vulture again. Sure. Yeah, that we talked about last week. Mm -hmm. Let's see, anything on the next page, next line? Hub, pretty regular. If I had known, I would have uh -huh. thought that's a T. But it's not a T, it's a... Apparently, it's a, a, a Y, a double stroke, a double J. Yeah, I think you kind of have to know that's what it is. But the ha, the, and the loop goes way up above like it did before. Right. Yeah, he, he loves to do that. Inu, inuha, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. He just loves to do that. Neat. Yeah. So the ligature here is nice. Like, Okay, I'm not sure if you guys can see my cursor, probably not. I'm trying to trace the, yep. the, the shape. Um, yeah, I can see it. Oh, okay, that works, cool. Anything else? Whenever they write the three gods, basically, I notice it's this interesting shape where the first one is just straight, the second one is also just straight with a little serif at the bottom. And then you do this part here, only the last flag gets really the flag part, and then the last flagpole, assuming that is a flagpole. Yeah. yeah, I think it must be. And, and then the fourth vertical is the bird on stick. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ergent, and then a nice imperative. But it's said in, in, in Coptic again, Amu, I think, right? 
the thing. The im. Yeah, the im or im. Yeah, I think it's just im, right? Mm -hmm. I, I got it. Can I ask a question about that last sent, sentence again? Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, uh, I, I just, just about the grammar uh, with the verb being first and then, or with the uh, subject being first and the verb being second, is that uh, still like, like Christian said last time, um, an adverbial sentence with a preposition just ellipsed, just not there, because it's such a common thing? Ooh. And I wish I knew or, that. Or that, I, I actually, <laughs> like, like I said, I, like you said earlier, we don't, I, don't, I actually don't know late Egyptian enough to know mm -hmm. if, if that's because it's subject verb. And then, you know, last week, Christian was saying that there's the her is just out of there, is just yeah. dropped out. And it's an adverbial sentence rather than a verbal sentence. So I think you would have to say it that way in Middle Egyptian. And I think in Coptic, you would have to have not a preposition, but one of the like the durative prefix or some kind yeah. of conjugation prefix to reduplicate the set to continue the subject into the verb. So maybe that's yeah. our or, argument. Or the, is, is there, a, is there um, a thing like that in Coptic where they have a preposition like upon, you know, a preposition and an infinitive? I, I, I know the not, first. Okay, go ahead. I think it's not preposition plus infinitive, but like all the conjugation pre prefixes, like uh, it would be off. Or, or I guess, uh, yep, us like she did a thing, um, and and so if you, you wanted to say neat, she did a, you would say neat, she did a thing, right? You wouldn't say neat thing or neat did. If you want to have the sub uh, uh, nominal subject like that first you, to set it off, you have to continue it with a suffix, a conjugation prefix with the the resumptive pronoun. Am I making any sense at all? Yep. Yep. But then the um. Okay. But then the thing that she's doing would be a verb. But then that would be the infinite infinitive because a but, is. But the Coptic verb. verbs are all late Egyptian infinitives. Yep. Um. So so in this case, is this uh, is this that structure? Is this a late? Is this an infinitive with a preposition that's missing, like that sentence from last week? I'm just I'm just curious because I I feel like we gotta know the know it you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. uh, that sounds plausible, but I have no idea. Do you know Aurelio? <laughs> I think you know more late Egyptian than the rest of us. But. Um, not. No, I was wondering about the same thing. So, I mean, basically, I think in late Egyptian, you have two choices, uh, basic choices. You could have, um, for example, subject, could, and then infinitive, infinitive, or it could be subject and stative. Um, and both of those arrive into, into Coptic, right? Because you can have either an infinitive or a qualitative um, after the, the subject, and then all sorts of conjugation prefixes before that. But what we have here is two forms. I mean, you have the, the aha in and the, the when in and, uh, sorry, when in and then subject, subject, something. Those are Middle Egyptian constructions, and I'm not sure how those work in Late Egyptian. If they're, and I thought, let's cheat. Because Rams is online, they actually break down what they think it is. And let's see what they have. Uh -huh. Oh, great. Because um, I don't know better than you guys either. So <laughs> let's see if they, they have anything. Um, okay, okay, that's before where we are. Okay. You're right. Right. Well, so back those forever. The and, kind of, yeah, we've been debating. They've been in court forever. Mm -hmm. Been 2-2. Two, two. Here we go. Here we go. And on the zone, do la la function de Osiris, etc., etc. Um, wait, that's that's it, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. So they think it is like Kevin said. It's with a with a with a missing preposition. Oh yeah. Oh great. Mm. That's the interpretation. And then and then hub is a, an infinitive. That's what yep, they upon mm -hmm. upon sending or then she upon sending to yeah. Yeah, she was upon sending to the Ennead. Yeah. Or Jed, in, in order to say. And then, I'm sorry, Aurelio, could you um, repeat what you said our two uh, possibilities are for making a sentence in late Egyptian? You I mean, said something you, like that. Mm -hmm, go ahead. 
Oh, no, I, I, yeah, what are the two possibilities we got? Oh, okay. I mean, there's more than two, but basically in the, the construction, we have the subject first and then the, the, the verb, quote unquote, second. I think the two more common ones are either so subject plus plus her, plus verb in the infinitive, or it could be subject and then a stative. Like for example, oh, so, yeah. um, I am sitting or something. Um, what would that be? Or, or he, let, let, let's make it easy. He, he was sitting, so something like, like uh, the prince was sitting, the prince um, um And that's not herde plus, plus an infinitive, but it would just be um, the stative form. And then in Coptic becomes a qualitative. So the same thing. For, but would the stative be written, be marked in writing? Um, it would be, for example, for the first person, it would be qui, uh, K W I, right. I think. And for the feminine, it could still have the old T on there. Um, for the masculine, I don't know. I'm going out on limb here. Would you write a W sometimes or not? Who knows? <laughs> but, it wouldn't be an exception, but well, hey, not even then, actually, all the time. Um, Fortunately, we have a feminine subject. We have a feminine subject, yeah. Oh, I see where you're going. So is that how you could tell apart what it is? Um, yeah, good yeah, if, if the If it was reliably written with a two or something. Right, or two, yeah, right. For... you're right. Uh, the only thing I don't know is when you have constructions like this, like when in and then something, something, um, do they take her plus infinitive normally? I thought, right. I thought they didn't, but then again, that's completely outside of my... Let's accept it like this for the moment, what you guys think. <laughs> it could be a yeah. good follow up. But at least the guys from from uh, from uh, Ramses Online think so. Do they have this entire text, Ramses Online? Do they do the entire text? Yeah. Can you send us a link? That looks great. I didn't know it was like... It, wow. It Absolutely. Uh, I'll just... It'll save a lot of looking things up. <laughs> yeah, it's fantastic. I just screen capped the URL, but... I'll oh. fill the, the Enzo Curico shaped hole in my heart. <laughs> there you go. Right. Oh. There's the whole thing. <laughs> my my yeah. French is much better than my Italian. <laughs> that is also an advantage, though. I mean, Aaron, if you want, we actually do have a saved copy of Enzo's webpage. Oh, really? Yeah. So if you want to refer to yeah. it, we can. I, I can send you one. But. Oh, oh, great! Thank you. Oh, I also have. I also entered it all into um, into JSESH because I I I'm one of those guys who doesn't refresh or who keeps their web pages open. So I had it for a while until my oh, nice. computer started, and then I lost it. But okay. I still got. So it. Cool. Okay. So Cherny and Grawl do say the feminine singular third person would have a two or a T at the end. Right. Okay. That Probably. In the stative. So that speaks for the infinite. Is it infinitive or infinitive in English? I always get that wrong. Infinitive. Infinitive. Okay. Because it is not a finite verb. It doesn't occur at a specific time. Right, right, right. Now I just always get the stress wrong. Infinitive. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, it's the stress. Yeah. You say what? I say I infinitive. Say infinitive for some reason. I stress the second syllable. Infinitive. Yeah, in infinitive. Yeah. Infinitive or infinitive? I think that's the American pronunciation, at least. Oh, is that what it is? Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, let's go on. Eljet, give the give the. Was it the, the office, right? The office of mm -hmm. the So let's have a look. Yeah. Give, that looks normal. Tie again that, that ligature they <laughs> know, but that's a, an other word. Huh. This here looks pretty normal. Highly contracted uh, or, or compressed. The WT, word. yeah. I think you kind of have yeah. to know. I think that's a ligature. Then you do something like this, I guess. Um, the determinative is clear, the plural strokes. The plural strokes. And then the... Oh, yeah, I don't... Yeah, the three lines. Oh, yeah, they are there. You're right. You're, you're right. That's sort of like, like squished together here. 
Yeah, it's, it's a little blurry. Like, I think some of the inks flaked off there. Mm. Or they were running out of ink on in the first place. Mm. No, 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 Cyrus, you can tell the ray sign from the, the third H because it's the ticks at the bottom instead of at the top. Yes, true. Mm -hmm. Do you think they go clockwise or counterclockwise for that For one? this one? I yeah. think they probably go like this. This and then the ticket. Oh, the three separate one. strokes. Okay. One, two, oh. three. I think so. Can't prove it though. Um, just somehow intuitively makes the most sense. Hmm. What else do we have? I think the rest a giant, a giant determinative stroke. Yeah. Hieroglyphics are most tiny. The tiny little F just crammed in there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. Right. Okay. It's funny because he's usually very grand with his Fs. Mm -hmm. It looks like an afterthought, doesn't it? Well, it, it looks, like, for, it looks like you forgot it and went, oh, that his. It does, except it also looks like it's under the feet of the Horus. So I think it's an addition because you're right. Normally he likes to be. Flamboyant with all his yeah. down strokes, and mm -hmm. he doesn't do that here at all. It's this tiny little thing. All right, should we do the next one? Who wants it? I can do it. All right. Start, starting with M. Um. All right, sorry, just a sec. <clears throat> Um, Getting is tricky. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, M ir, uh, iret, na, um, and it says uh, there's something here. There's something ellipsed after the na, uh, uh, a y n. I, I'm just a. Uh, I'm just looking at um, the uh, trend, um, and it's us. Uh, Ellipse after the wait where? Um, before the before the uh, SP, it says. Uh, I'm just looking at the transliteration from that site. Ah. it says there's a YN in there. That, that, that it needs a YN after the na. I, I don't know what that means. I'm just. Uh, oh, I think I do. Um, I think it just means these, like like na, like the, the demonstrative. But, hmm, but I'm not sure why. Oh. Na I thought Is it was it just, just na a plural, plural determinative na article. Na I don't so, see any evidence of that in the hieratic. Yeah, they, they're saying it's ellipsed from the hier hieratic. It's oh, just a, oh, 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 I see, I see. Yeah, it's, a, it's not in there. Um, and, and then they're saying, but they need it. You know, whoever did the... Um, anyways, anyways, uh, Seperu, uh, A-N. Um. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah I got you. Mm -hmm. Okay, you, you got it? Okay, cool. Um, Let me look it up. I think I know what that is. Gerigneti ben set ar set. Yeah. I think that's a good stop point. You're right. All right. Mm -hmm. So what I'm not sure the the M we haven't discussed yet. That's the negative imperative. So yeah, yeah. Um, M er is yeah negative. Don't do which is the next er. Um, uh, such or the or this these. Um, I guess a uh, stepper in this case it usually means things or like um. Uh, 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 happenings. So don't do such things, um, and don't do such great things. And the agur uh, is a is a lie. Um, so it's don't do such great lies. 
or you know they they translate it as injustice or um so it's like a general sense of lie i guess um and there's a a ben um neti oh oh which are which is uh not in which is which these things are not for this place so improper is how they translated it so ben uh, neti ben set er are set so these things are not these lies are not good for this place or are not for this place does that make sense makes yeah. sense right i mean that are not for this place in this place towards this place towards their place actually right there's a yeah not in there which makes sense in its place would be proper so in the, yeah. and not in their place would be not proper like i, I get what that means where that's going so for the, the translation goes um don't commit such blatant acts of injustice which are improper and it kind of makes sense to me the yeah. great these great things um and then how is um grg is like a lie um so it's like blatant acts of injustice mm. and then and then the um you know relative adjective type thing at the end there right the one that we practice in class a lot with the yeah. and and uh and yeah, yeah, the verbial, uh, clause yeah yeah look at that we can <laughs> lift this sentence straight out and put it in class Next there we go put it straight into the the exercise <laughs> yeah i don't know i don't i don't uh understand how um oh it's a oh there's an n there okay so it's it's blatant acts of lies. So it's mm -hmm. um yes okay. So it's, so that's a um a genitive. Oh okay. okay. Well yeah, let's take a really look at that. So sep normally I think time or occasion in the in the, the yeah. class of the sense. Yeah. So let's see what else Lesko has. He has actions, event, deeds, matters, occasions, acts, acts. X sounds right. Yeah. I like that one. And let's see what Gerek is again. We had that one before. Is it Gerek or just Ger? G R G. It, uh, G -G oh yeah. Because of the um because of the uh bent determinant. Is a bilateral? Yeah, it's a trilateral, trilateral, I think, or maybe a bilateral. It um, is. But anyways, that, that's usually lies or lies. and I guess yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah, lies, falsehood. I think sometimes injustice too. Let's take a look. Sounds sounds reasonable. And somebody doesn't know his alphabet, otherwise I wouldn't be scrolling around. So here we go. <laughs> I always I always sing it in my head when I'm looking things up. Yep. You did in the in the Egyptological sequence. Uh huh. You have yeah. a song for the Egyptological sequence. Now you have to sing it for us. Uh, e -R -U -B -P -F -M -N -R -H 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 -S -H <laughs> That's the end. Wait, there's more. Now you know the unilaterals. And don't forget, there's the Z with the S. Oh my gosh, this is awesome. <laughs> wow, it's <that's> amazing. <laughs> I swear to God, I swear gotta... every time I'm looking something up, I'm always like, oh. <laughs> now you got to do one for the Coptic alphabet. I'll have oh. to learn it before I do that. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. So that's oh, God, a, you're recording this. <laughs> this is for posterity. You're right? immortal you're now. Oh, God. Okay, here we go. Gonna be yeah, trending. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, I mean, we already have it. The song. It's falsehood. Falsehood. Yeah, so it's falsehood. yeah, like you said, that's really all it means. Yeah. Falsehood or injustice. These acts of falsehood or these acts of in, maybe injustice, but I'm interpreting. Who knows? Mm. Yeah. Well, if it's um, if it's blatant acts or large acts of lies, you could say that that's injustice. Right. Yeah. And that wasn't in there, right? Like I said, yeah, it's just a genitive. Mm -hmm. Yep. 
cool. And then we had the, the Netty or Enti. Um, there was something here. Ah, oh, yeah, you had asked about the Nye at the beginning. So I think there's two things you could do. So when oh. you have a plural noun, you can just stick a Na in front of it. Um, there's some things like the, the kids or something. Or if you want to make it these, it would be Nye plus N, like uh, with the extra little two strokes and then an N which can fall out in writing. I think that's the construction. I'm not completely wrong. And I think that's what, what Enzo apparently thought. Oh, so so they're, they're not saying the, like everything that he's talking about, it, he's referring to what he's talking about. That's the distinction. Yeah, the acts of, uh, these, the great acts of injustice or these great acts of injustice. I think Enzo was interpreting it as these great acts. Um, with a with an I N as opposed to which makes more sense intuitively than just sticking a, a V in front of it. it feels kind of awkward. And and you're saying Enzo is the guy who made the um, transliterations online, the Italian guy or something. Correct. Okay. correct. Yeah. But then if you look at the French team, basically they thought it's just straight up not. Yeah. So. I'm hesitant to put words in the scribe's mouth or change what he's written unless it's something that's clearly a mistake. In this case, it feels more like an interpretation. Or, or it might be something that they leave out all the time. And so he's just assuming, like, I, I haven't read enough hieratic to know if it's left out all the time. You know, like the her, we can't assume that the her is left out because that's a- I mean, he definitely, he definitely does put an eye in though, because he had, he had one- a, few lines back okay. where now and there's one coming up as well i think okay i don't but, know i'd agree let's leave it let's leave the text unless it's i mean it's always kind of presumptuous to know better and than a, a native speaker right yeah. <laughs> i'm gonna take it out i'm gonna i'm gonna go with you guys and take it out luckily i can i can share this with you once i finish it i just gotta add a couple more but i got i shared um page three uh, in discord um, with uh, the translation from the book, um, the um, glyphs, and then Nenzo's transliterations. And then we, we get to, because he leaves out all these Ys and Ts and stuff too, and Ws. He, um, and we can just add them in how we like them. Cool. Cool. That's great. Which... I like the Nefeferpa in the translation here. Say again. Where? Oh, just the French line underneath it. it it's M, which is na, and then fer, fer, pa, fer. presumably. Le <laughs> foie bon de mes, men, mensonge. <laughs> do, do. I, I just like the fer, fer, the do, do. It's like very literal. <laughs> Why am I so oh, we say that in English. Yeah, you can say that. Don't do, do. Yeah. <laughs> sort of. the, things that, the things that I do, do. Oh. <laughs> and then if you're quick enough, you get to make a, a very childish joke about that. Yes, of course. Yeah. <laughs> you, said, <laughs> you do, you know. Too funny. Should we switch back? Sure. Yeah. Where did it go? Um, it's the next tab over. Set. Yeah, I just can't get there because the um, you guys can't see that, but the, the Zoom controls are right over it. Okay. Oh. Yep. So should we do the hieratic? Let's see. This all looks pretty clear, doesn't it? Sep. Um, is the is the the ch and the the sep is that different? I think it is, but I'm not sure. Hard to tell from here. It looks a bit more. It's hard to tell. My understanding from Middle Egyptian is that you can't actually tell them apart most of the time. Even in hieroglyphs, they get confused because the the stippling is very, very light. So if there's something circular, you kind of people pick by context whether they transcribe. I guess it's supposed to be like the floor of a granary with all the the detrius on it, but oh, like, or if it's the sun, or if it's the third age. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I couldn't. And the, 
the third age are you talking about passage or because i heard you say that before well i'm talking about that, that sign like there are three round signs that are often very easy to confuse there's the third and, age and the raw sign and then this one that's in zap and the third age uh, i i'm sorry what what is the oh the i i, I don't the, understand the sign is the third the, age the circle with the the horizontal lines in it but in hieratic it's just kind of a curly cube. oh the x the third h okay i was yeah. hearing a different okay, uh, okay. <laughs> yes yes the x in, in nbc <laughs> I was hearing third age, A-G-E. Oh. oh. And I was like, yeah, what? Yeah. Sign is that? <laughs> You're no a happy H. H. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, Spoken happy H. <laughs> Let's see. What All else right. do we have? We have a long U, color strokes, then the... The uh -oh is pretty clear there. Yeah. Um, this last bit I was pretty lost on though, like the, how do you know that's a swash and not a W? Like, mm. oh, this one. Yeah, yeah, that one. Like, yeah, it goes all the way around the end, and it comes back and does a fairly normal like Y one in plural strokes, but it's kind of it feels weird to me that it goes around the end. Agree. It's it's kind of interpretation at this point in time, right? Isn't it? Because I mean, sometimes it has that little. A sender here going to the into the U, like here. Yes, that's true. But I don't think he always does it. Sometimes he also has the has the W as um. It more looks like how would I say that? Yeah, it looks like the first part here, just without the loop. I wouldn't be able to tell honestly. I think context in this case. I mean, you already had one one read vowel. How many more? Uh, one read consonant. How many more do you want? <laughs> but now could be either. You're right. I think. Let's look at the next line. There's a G, the way he does that is like that, and then just like a P essentially. The R just, I mean, you could think that's an N. Again, I think context. Um, I'm not sure if I could be able to tell them apart. I don't think so. And that's an interesting sign. Looks very different from the hieroglyphic one. Uh -huh. The little Z book roll squished underneath. Um, then here we have the, the evil bird. Um, he always writes it with that long uh, vertical on top of it. So that's not something separate, but he always goes like, Ch and then the, the little rest of the bird. I've seen okay. that on, on several occasions. So I'm wondering, like, are those, is that the double strokes or is that the wing of the bird? Like, double stroke. Oh, oh okay. yeah. You can't see Can we look at molar for the bend bird? <laughs> it does look like the wing of the bird. Yeah. The way he does it. It does look like wings. You're right. It looks like the, the paw wings, right? But uh, yeah, it looks a lot like the paw wings or the, the boot wings. There are a few examples in the text though where you can see it without it, I'm pretty sure. Um, okay. maybe there will be one. Do you, mind, the... do you mind pulling up Müller to see if <laughs> like is it always without wings? No, absolutely. Yeah. No problem. Hang on. If I can get or the on. online version. Yeah. Uh, Tsukuba, right? Yeah. Tsukuba University. <laughs> Does anybody know the code for this one? Nope. Oh, were bird or the bin bird? Bin bird. Bin bird. Yeah. It's like G34, maybe. Awesome. That's um, or it might be G. Not 34. Uh, uh, try 43. I'm just I'm just guessing. I'm just trying to see. 43 is the quail check. Uh, no, that's the quail check. All right. Oh. Where is it? Okay. Uh, try G36. 36. There it is. Oh, that's a bit. That's, that's a word. Ben Bird is G37. Oh, uh, yep. There you go. Awesome. Hmm. Look at that. This one has, has that wings. One has wings. Hmm. I wonder. I wonder. 
or they were confused and it's, yeah. like, it's double ticks like ours. I wonder. I mean, no. especially since it's, oh, go ahead, Evan. Oh, no, I was just agreeing with what Ralph said. That's an interesting point. Someone misinterpreted double ticks as wings. Right. Because uh, in this, uh, in this in this word uh, grg there is no y in there there's so those double ticks are are part of the determinative and not part of the phonetic because it's after the two two other determinatives if you look at the original text that we're looking at uh -huh. oh okay hang on hmm. Hmm. Um, so so they might have thought that that's part of the character i i can see easily how it could be or maybe it is part of the character and Gardner got it wrong. Yeah. Very cool. You're right. I mean, that's what it looks like. Huh. And it does look a lot like the power wings, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. Wow. Oh, that's interesting. There's another one in a few lines, I think, because the, the Lord of it all. Oops. <laughs> Sorry about that. I moved the page. Sorry, I was just trying to illustrate it for the recording, what we're talking oh, about. Oh, yeah, you're right. We should do that. I'm bad at that. I don't even know how to do that. <laughs> Let's do it again when we get back there in a moment. Um, the Lord of it all is going to trash talk uh, Horus in a few lines. Trash talk. Yeah, he does. Like, you're such a kid, and this this uh, this job is way too big for you, unless you have bad, bad breath or something. <laughs> and then he gets so sad. But he just lays there. <laughs> There's another one right there. There it is, and it has wings again. You oh. yeah, that one is not that one. The double tick wouldn't be after the determinative, so it's not. It's more believable it's, that it's a double tick. And then look right before. There's a there's a bin bird without the double ticks. Right? Is that without a bin the bird wings? There? Oh, yeah, there you are. That's a bin bird. There's, yeah. So they do consistently have that big. Sort of vertical right. beginning. Huh. Huh. So okay. Well, that's that's a good way when we're handwriting to distinguish the bin bird from the were bird. Right. Just to do that big vertical. Stick its neck up. Neck up. <laughs> <laughs> cool. But so, have we decided now if the I mean, there's one that doesn't have the wings. So that makes me think the wings are, could mean something else. Like there could really be a, a Y. Yeah, it could, maybe it's phonetic, something that we don't understand. Yeah. Right. Ah. So that corresponds to that. And so we're arguing about whether this little thing here is the wings or it's the double strokes that have been transcribed down here. Right. And Mueller, Mueller shows an example that says it's the bin bird, but has wings. But we found the example in the line below where one of them has wings and one of them doesn't. Mm. So maybe Gardner's right there. And somebody here is confused whether it's uh, um, Mollier or Gardner, or there's two different interpretations, I guess. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And since we don't really understand what the double strokes mean in all these words anyway, that like Christian's theory was that they're indicating some kind of vowel difference in the way you pronounce it, but they're not a literal consonant. But no, I don't think we actually know what those mean in, in late Egyptian. Nope. They just show up at the end of words that aren't, when they aren't there in Middle Egyptian. Right. Very true. Okay, that's, <laughs> there's a tail walking through your picture, Ralph. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Bass is blessing our, our lesson. Got it. <laughs> Let's see, then a, a button negation, um, a say or set in their place. So that's really still with a, with a U at the end there. Doesn't use the article for that, interestingly, but you still glue on the third person person plural. I mean, normally, wouldn't it be like a demonstrative article where you go like, uh, now is it or something like, 
their places or now set their places. Hmm. But apparently you can still do that. You can still stick the 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 third person at the end of nouns, like a middle Egyptian. And like a middle like a middle Egyptian possessive, yeah. Right, right. Because I mean Middle Egyptian, right? It would be Itef, his father, and late Egyptian should be uh Paif it like his father with a demonstrative article. So I just notice here we're doing still the old thing. Mm -hmm. All right. Next one. We're doing good on time. Um, I can take that one. Uh, let me take that little piece here. So basically, M Rapu. Um, a or E, Kent. Let's stop there. I had to look this one up. So apparently, um, Rapu, hang on, let me look up my notes, what that means again. That means otherwise. So that's a, a fixed expression. Um, <sighs> there is also an expression, Emra, which means also, but that's not it. It's Rapu that's, that's uh, relevant here. I took some searching. So, so what does that mean literally like that's some frozen thing from middle egyptian the in in the mouth that is or something possibly huh um rapu, rapu. or is that or is that a preposition is that actually ra or is it uh, i would think well i guess sometimes they write the preposition with it with the, the determinative stroke oh but it has a determinative stroke you're right so, but usually that means mouth when it's got right. a literal stroke yeah. So Rob, it would be the mouth, or it is the mouth, but yeah, and usually that that means like manager or leader of it, MR in the mouth, right? Yeah, right. that's what you just. I got stuck on that. That's where I bracketed it. Mm, MR poo. I mean, a ra could also be a how do you say the saying, right? Like in the, mm. in the book of the dead, or in, when you have those um, those sayings in like magical text. Saying number one, another saying for this and this. Um, Rapu. How do demonstratives? Oh, work? yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. How does it work again in Middle Egyptian when you when you want to stick a, like if you wanted to say this thing, try to remember now. There's several different ways. There would be the pen, right? Not the Rapu. So now I'm not sure if we can figure out what the etymology behind this one is. So it could be it could be something like um, something like having said that. That's sort of what I'm like, like the direction I'm leading as well, like like the you know that like said that mm. like the having mouth that or within the mouthing of this, well, you know, so that therefore or you know. My Middle Egyptian is really bad, but I'm having a grammar right here. And basically, so Herupu would be this day. So Rapu could be this utterance, basically. Could be this, this saying. So it could be just nominal. I like what we just had, having said this, that, that sort of makes sense. So simply, otherwise. <laughs> otherwise, A Kent. I'm did you, did you wait? Sorry, um, did you say that you found this as a set saying? Yes. Or, okay. Jung. Or, in Jung. Jung. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. So, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, that's that's cool. Actually, let me check now. That's interesting. Does does uh, Lesko have it? Because I looked for Emra and didn't didn't find the right thing, and then I found it in Jung more like by. By good luck. Let's see if Rapu is in here. Here's the MRA, but it's something else. Um, mouth, spell, utterance. But no, no M. The only place I saw it was Junge, but he had it. Let's go with it. So 
otherwise, this being otherwise, a can't. So I'm going to be angry. Um, I think that's a third future. So it should really be eu e r. Or I said a because that's where it becomes in Coptic, right? So u um, e r. I'm going to become angry. Eric can't. Makes sense. And then yeah, that's a that's a more traditional verbal structure. Um, at, at traditional according to Middle Egyptian, I see that better. I think there's an R missing in here. Um, how do you draw on here? Under view options at the top of the screen, at least on mine, there's a annotate button, which opens a tool palette that will let you draw on the screen. There you go. So I think the way that this works is like that. There's another R in between here. That would be a third future. So something like, oof, this is going to be ugly. <laughs> U-E-R. And in Coptic, that becomes a yeah. I think. I mean, it makes sense in that context. If not, then this will happen. And then it goes on with a subjunctive with a connecting connecting tense, M2. M2 tapet, Sheikh. Chehi, I don't know. N pa N pa U something. I'm gonna cheat on this one. <laughs> Let's see what, what our friends have up here. M Rapu U, okay, so or you e r can so i'm going to become furious so far so good and they also have the future three m to top it then the the, the sky chechen also the verb is chechen i don't know that one and pa yutin yutin the ground uh-huh let's see if we have chechen handy yeah, I looked up. I looked up. It was um, touch or meet. So, ah, so the sky okay. touch the ground. Okay, so that fits then. Um, and Newton, the ground. I've never seen that one before either. Me neither. That's a really weird way to say that. Hmm. And it's also it, it's written interestingly. Like there's a whole bunch of things deleted. Um, I'm not quite sure how you normally write that. I looked at where did I look at in Vegas? I found a ground that starts with U, but it's written differently. It's written with a. I think they spell out the ten, or there's a. Is there ta? I can't remember, but it's not written like that at all. Let's take a look at it. Let's see if Lesko has it. If this thing had, if it was like a proper PDF that you could actually search, that would be so great. Oh, well. On the other hand, having it at all is great. When I first got younger and I didn't have Lesko, um, and he, in the first chapter, he basically goes like, transcribe the following words. And none of them are, are spelled the Middle Egyptian way. And I had no idea how to even start doing this. And then once you find Lesko, every single one is in there. Ooh, this is taking forever. Sorry, guys. We're getting closer. There we go. You, you what? You. You ten. You ten. You t. You ten. ten. There. Ah, there it is. Yeah. See, so it's it's got ten. Oh, wait there. Ah, bingo. Yep. And apparently, you can just be lazy and. Oh, sometimes in group writing too. Or something like that. I don't know. Maybe not. 
I mean, there's just a lot of lot of double and triple complementing going on. You ten u. Would that make it a loan word? Hmm. Does Hawk have it? Not sure. Is it side or lot? Compare Jensen P three nine six. I don't know what what Jensen is. Isn't that the like Dear Al Medina economic text where? Oh, I think Jensen isn't Jensen the one who's famous for working out the prices of everything. Oh, like going through all the economic records from Dear Al Medina and figuring out what things actually cost to buy wow. in the New Kingdom. Oh, neat. I don't know that one at all. It's a great book. But there is a literature thingy at the beginning, so. Maybe they'll say, where's Jensen? Up there he was. There he was and didn't say anything. Jensen supplement. Commodity price. It's from the Ramasite Ramis period. That's the one. Oh, cool. Oh, there's one on letters and communications as well. Oh, nifty. Cool. Some cool stuff to look up. All right. Hey, we have six more minutes. Let's finish that sentence up. I think we had it, actually. Um, how do I... Here we go. So, and the, so if not, I'm going to get angry and the sky will fall to the earth. Let's take a quick look at the higher. Sounds bad. Uh, it sounds like don't don't make me angry. <laughs> <laughs> Gods have much more problems when they get angry than normal people, I guess. Yeah, uh, very true. That's the cue, apparently. The cue is interesting, isn't it? That's one of my my gripes with the um, the shipwrecked sailor. Um, they basically have like this this nice little circle on there, which you can make with a modern digitizer pen, but you could never do that with mm. like a, a blade like pen. You can see that here. It's like one, two, three. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Do you think it's um? Do you think it's two lines going down, or do you think it's going up and down? I think it's two lines going down, because otherwise, if you try that on papyrus, it's going to splatter all over the place. If you're trying to go back up against the grain, I think. Not 100% sure, but like, for example, when you do the, the S hieroglyph, the one with the folded cloth, uh, you can clearly see it's two pieces. It goes like one, two, like left, right. I think they are the same thing yeah. here. And the corner at the top is very sharp. It seems like it'd be hard to do that changing directions, but. I think so. I mean, you can try it. Um, if you haven't bought papyrus yet on Amazon, you can basically buy as much as you like in any size you want. And it's not too expensive. So. Uh, <laughs> Lots of different sizes lying around. It's kind of fun. It's also hard to work with it. I tried to use a, a normal, like, quote unquote, Western pen to write on it. Oh my God, what a disaster. Yeah, it's I was <laughs> more intimidated by the price of the witch pen you found. That yeah, exactly. I mean, the, the, the witch pen, that's how I found it actually, because I tried a traditional call calligraphy pen and it got stuck in all the fibers and there was ink splattering <laughs> everywhere on the table, on me, on the papyrus. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when, I, when I basically started Googling, what can I use to write on papyrus? And one of the, the first articles that came up had the witch pens. And ah, that's how they did it. Okay. I mean, that's how you can do it. Okay. So the, I think the, the D, you have to know it's there. The, like, like the, D, with the T huh? there. The T. Yeah. Like the, mat, the shapes match up, but I don't know that I could tell that from an R. Nah, I don't think you can. I think it's like like our M and N and U, which a lot of people write the same mm. way. So you just have right. to know. And then mm. two legs with a stick. That's pretty fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. M T W. Nice M. Nice tall. Tall ligature together. Mm -hmm. Then the, the P coming, interestingly enough, doesn't, I mean, often the, the, the orthography is really different, right? In, in hieroglyphs, mm -hmm. they try to stick the P and the T on top. And here they do it completely differently. P first, then somehow the, the, the sky, and then there's like a little T squished under. Mm. Quite different. Here they're nice to us. The Ch actually has a dot. 
the, um, the Pikachu H or <laughs> go again? Isn't that the Pikachu H? Yeah. That's the, Christian calls it the Pikachu H because it's a surprise with the round circle. There's some meme with where Pikachu has a little round mouth, and so it looks it's like the dot mouth underneath. Is like a little dot. So it's in like translation. the <laughs> right, the, the English transcription. I was just trying to see how I get Pikachu out of this, but <laughs> <laughs> it yeah, it's a few work. steps removed. <laughs> gotcha. No, no, but you're right with the H dot. Yeah, that works. Um, little walking legs, an N, a pa, and then this totally unexpected. What is this? Is this a deer? In any case, uh, yeah, just like the wow. the. That's just like the, um, the cow. You just have to know that that's how you write it because it doesn't look anything like it's... Oh, well, I think this is just the head expanded big time. Actually, we can do that one on Merlot if somebody happens to know the code on this one. Um, what did we even go by transcription? It's, uh, what are we looking up? The little uh, the... dough or whatever that is. Oh. Newborn Bebastus, I think Al Alan calls it. He calls it about Una. It's E9. E9, okay. I think it is already. So, Old Kingdom, and some have to get rid of my. Oh, yeah, there. There it is. So, those look pretty well behaved, but then once you get to New Kingdom, the head becomes really big. It's actually the volume three version that looks oh. a lot more like ours with just it looks the like a, angle. Looks like a giant corner with just a little afterthought on it. Yeah. Right. But all of this suggests that the little like W shape inside it is part of the Bubastis sign. So I guess for the two strokes that uh, the two elision strokes that Gardner transcribes, like one of them is by itself and the other one is connected to the the canal determinative? The canal? Hang on. Isn't that what that is? The little two strokes with bars on top and bottom? Oh, let's go back there. Um, you mean... Oh, you mean... Oh, oh, I got you. I got you. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This thing here. Oof. Yeah, like this is... Is this one stroke and this is another illusion stroke? And then messed you up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, the so this one's the determinative, then, right? Yeah, that that's the determinative bar. So that is is this one. But then, which one are like which of these three is is which of the things above? Because mm. it seems like this bit here inside the angle is part of the bubastus. Yes, mm. definitely. You definitely. Right? Looks like our our canal is is just squished together into. Yeah, or well, there's like I, at first I thought this was the canal and then this was an extra stroke or something. But right. Sorry, I guess you can't see my thing, but but the U shape here was the canal. But I mean, let's put this way: the I'm not sure how many words there are with a U, but I guess it's it's probably not that many. Well, I'm trying to go as again, this could be a little bit of guesswork, but not sure. Guys, I think we have to hold it here. Um, so Miriam is starting a minute ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we Busy day. Okay. Shall we continue next week? Sure. I, I think so. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Awesome. Well, then, thanks so much for joining. Yeah. And thanks everyone for coming. Yeah. Thank you. Bye bye. See you guys, next week. Oops. There it goes. <laughs>